Hello, namaste and welcome to the Drishtikon show. I have with me uh, Mr. Ankush Bhandari and namaste Ankush ji. Namaste uh, Ganesh ji. Uh, uh, so we'll be, uh, you know, talking about the Chandrayaan. On uh, August 23rd, uh, history was created. When uh, Chandrayaan mission was successful, the spacecraft had been launched on July 14th from 14th. the Shri Hari Kota Center. And the lander touched down at 12.32 UTC. Uh, yeah. This was the first time anyone from planet Earth, in our times at least, had landed on that spot. So today yeah. we'll discuss about that. And uh, so let's uh, uh, go over some of the things uh, like about the history of ISRO and the history of the space program, the Indian space program. So, uh, so Ankushi, uh, so let's start. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, I mean, like about the history and all that. So let's take it, start from there. Namaste Deshi again. And uh, uh, thank you so much for inviting me again on your, uh, on your podcast. And uh, good evening to everybody in the U.S. and good morning to your viewers in India. So, yes, history is created. And uh, India, ISRO has created a history. And it's a very uh, proud moment for the whole human being, the whole humanity, as Prime Minister Modi said, right? That it's, the, it's, the, it's a proud moment for the whole humanity that we have very successfully get into the South Pole of Moon. So that landing which we missed a couple of years back, now Chandrayaan 2 was also highly successful. It, it, was, it was doing its uh, uh, 80% of the work for which it was uh, positioned in, uh, on the moon. But still that main of landing on the South Pole was missed and, uh, uh, and it was accomplished very successfully over here in Chandrayaan 3 mission. Uh, which was launched, as you said, last month, and the mission was accomplished this month. So, so yes, that's a very proud moment. But uh, you, you very well asked me about the question of the history of uh, uh, of the Indian Space Research Organization. In short, we called ISRO, like uh, the uh, the abbreviation. But let me tell you, uh, the space is uh, the space exploration is not new. It has been written very well in our Vedas. One of the Veda, which is the Rig Veda, uh, only describes about uh, sun orbit, attraction of pal- uh, planets, and everything, even 1,000 years before Copernicus was born, you know. So let me tell you some of the experts from the Rig Veda, which I found over here. So Rig Veda, Canto 10, Chapter 22, verse 14 says, This earth is devoid of hands and legs, yet it moves ahead. All the objects over the earth also move with it. It moves around the sun. The other says that the sun moves, uh, which is Canto 1, chapter 35, verse 9 says, the sun moves in its orbit, but holding earth and other heavenly bodies in a manner that they don't glide with each other through the force of attraction. Even the Yajurveda mentioned the sun moves in its own orbit in the space taking along with itself all the mortal bodies like Earth through the force of attraction. So I can go on and on. There are many verses, but I hope you and your viewers get the point, right? So it, it is not that what, what uh, the scientists in our age are doing, whether it's from NASA or the Russian scientists or the Indian scientists, it has already been done long back uh, long back during the uh, during the period when uh, we can say when these Vedas were written millions of years back, even the saints, the Rishi Munis, which we call in a local language, know very well how the complete solar system works. And on this solar system, only the astronomy is based on all the all the people who has a little interest or who knows about astronomy knows that it's nothing new it's all depend on the on the solar system and it's all depend on those planets so <clears throat> even if you if you see our uh, our isro chairman has also mentioned i have a clip from for him he has also said that principles of science came from vedas but it was repackaged by western di- discoveries i repeat it were repackaged 
by Western discoveries. Indeed, Indian civilization has a long recorded history of scientific culture. So that was his, uh, his statement after, after the launch, successful launch, I will say, of Chandrayaan-3. And also he says, sciences come from Vedas, and, and what we are invention, the theory, the concepts are broadly based on Vedic knowledge, algebra, square root, concepts of time, architecture, the structure of universe, uh, metallurgy, and even aviation were first found in Vedas. So, so you can very well, so these are some words I, I get from there. So I, I think everybody right. knows the, uh, know what where I'm coming from and, and get the concept, right? right. So and, now, and very good, actually. Like one of the things yeah. I, you know, just to add to what you were saying was that, uh, you know, like Aryabhat, uh, you know, wrote Arya Bhatia and uh, Bhaskar Charya wrote uh, Siddhanta Shiromani. Oh. And there is one book uh, that I am also reading, Tantra Sangraya, which was okay. written by uh, the Kerala astronomer Nilkant Somayaji. Okay. And uh, he he did a lot of work on the planetary, uh, you know, geometry. And, yeah, please, please uh, mention that book when you uh, mention that name of the book when you write about this or so maybe our sure. viewers and we can get an idea and, and we can read it, you know, because yeah, actually, that's what... uh, two scientists <laughs> from IIT, K. Subramaniam and M.S. Shriram have actually done the, uh, the whole treatise on that. And it's very okay. informative. Um, so one of the things that, uh, you know, I was, I came across was that uh, there was this, you know, in the... Uh, uh, the book, the treatise by Aryabhat, uh, like he, you know, there are like several, like there are three or four different components, right, uh, or areas. Uh, in in the first one, in the last verse of that chapter, he writes that um, the importance of astronomy is stressed by asserting the knowledge of this section leads okay. one beyond the planets to the absolute Brahman. Which I think was oh. very, very interesting because okay. uh, the scientists or the rishis of that time were not just looking at the planetary stuff, but beyond that into the enlightened world or the Brahman itself, the, the oh. universal consciousness. So science for them was a way, was actually a spiritual path. It, it was a seeking for them, just as spiritual path is a seeking. So that is something that we have inherited in our culture so oh. so when we do seeking and all those things it is not a, a fluke or it's not an accident it is yep. because all the way from our rishis and vedas like you just shared, millions of years back millions right. of years back they have <clears throat> they have been sharing all that information they have been looking at things which was beyond the normal uh, uh, you know like human knowledge at that time so, right. and when this whole thing uh, was started, not many people know, but even signed, this this whole exploration, this whole journey started long back with yeah. you know, C.V. Yeah. Raman. C.V. Raman uh, won the Nobel Prize for physics in 1930. Physics. Yep. His yep. Raman <clears throat> effect was actually the basis of the spectrometry that was used for the interplanetary, uh, you know, research. Right, right. Also exactly. became the basis for like our lunar uh, you know exploration Meghna right. uh, saha and right. you know like there, so many there are many many scientists which we don't know uh, which 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 has not been mentioned in our history book or or any or any you know um, in the science books also right, right. across the world but they, these uh, scientists have done a lot of research and gives and we need to give the salute to them for what we know now because if you uh, if you remember einstein has said we owe a lot to indians because without zero there will be no chemistry no physics no mathematics no algebra no algorithm and we will be still be living in the cages absolutely <clears throat> and i think the thing that is important is like a lot of people were making fun of the astro scientists who were going to the temple now uh, you know a spirituality within sanatan dharma is not the same as a religion in other 
uh, you know, ideologies, right? So there's a difference. This was an exploration. That is why I believe that there was, I mean, whatever Arya Bhatt was staying, saying at that time right. was no different from what uh, uh, Professor or Dr. Uh, Somnath was saying when he visited the temples, that he was doing an internal, the inner uh, seeking like uh, through spirituality when he goes to the temple the outer seeking he does through the space research which is no different from how our rishis have always actually approached this thing right and also i want to mention i think um, most of your viewers should know that i was talking with somebody and he said uh, amal kumar rai Chaudhary. he hmm. was born in uh, before india was divided by britishers now in bangladesh and he did his higher studies in physics and he derived Raj Chaudhary equation which was used by Stephen Penrose and Stephen Hawkins to develop a mathematical model for the black holes. Wow. So he, they use his, his equation which is Raj Chaudhary equation which he derived in 1955. Though he was not given Nobel uh, Nobel Prize because you know it's all Western, you know, funded. But that's a different story for some other day, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But right. but but see, the, we have we have the scientist who has contributed a lot, a lot. And if we want to build a library, can be made on that. What a contribution of the scientists are. So now coming back to what <laughs> on the Chandrayaan three. <clears throat> so you know that Chandrayaan three. The ISRO was established in 1962, and the name was uh, Incospar, right? So uh, that was the original name, and it started in 1962 in April. And then they, it was it was all thanks to the Vikram Sarabhai, right, who was very enthusiastic, and it was uh, started with the first Prime Minister of India during his time. So, and later in on uh, uh, on November 23rd, uh, 1963. Excuse me. It was renamed to ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, right? And, and wasn't it in 1969 that it was named uh, as ISRO because I think the the INCOSPAR or the uh, Indian National Committee for Space Research right. was set up by Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, right? Right. And it was actually that INCOSPAR was uh, set up in 1945, and uh, okay. And then, you know, uh, when Inkospar became, uh, you know, ISRO, that uh -huh. I think, I thought was in 1969. It was after even Nehru died. Although, like, everything is given to Nehru, but, you know, <laughs> within the Indian, uh, this thing, but that's what, like, they say. But I think, okay. like, one of the, mm -hmm. like, one of the things that, like, I find fascinating is, like, at that time, you know, like we can actually go a little further back, right? Like right. when uh, in 1893, Swami Vivekananda was going to uh, Chicago from Japan. Right. In right. that, on that ship, he had met Jamshedji Tata. Jamshedji Tata, right? And on that ship, when he told, uh, you know, Jamshedji Tata was going to get the iron steel plant, which he used at Jamshedpur, and Swami Vivekananda was going for the World Parliament of Religions. And uh, Swamiji told Jamshedji, why don't you start an institute of fundamental science research in India itself so you don't have to buy this technology from outside. And right. that was the basis of the Indian Institute of Science. Yeah, now, IISS, in, which is in Bangalore. Yes. Right? And that became the basis, like that is where the Incospar had actually started and ISRO was really established in the initial yeah, time. Yeah, because Department of Atomic Energy, you know, it was mm -hmm. it was when it was started, right? And it was uh, because of what India has suffered because of, uh, you know, right. uh, we have already discussed that how we lost our scientists and our second prime minister. Uh, it was all uh, right. mentioned, right? In, and it yeah. was, uh, you know, because of Jamshedji Tata's uh, vision, there was this Parsi uh, gentleman. He was an ed educationist and a scholar, uh, Burjorji Patsha. And he, yeah. was, he, he really got passionate about this and he went after this. And he was the one who, who was like talking to everyone. And his efforts and Jay and Tata at that time, their effort were 
kind of uh, helped by the Mysore state, the Maharaja Vodeyar, right? Uh, uh, the Maharaja of uh, Mysore, his name was uh, Krishna Raja Vodeyar. Uh, yeah. He was very small, but his mother actually gave almost 375 acres of land where right. this was established. So one of the things that people miss is uh, this entire Indian Institute of Science and ISRO and Incospar initially were actually private enterprise. Private enterprise, like, actually, like, that, uh, like the airlines, right? Right. The Air they India were actually private financed enterprise. by private people, not the government. Yeah. Even not after independence, opinion. even after yeah. independence, you know, when actually, uh, uh, you know, Vikram Sarabhai wanted, uh, you know, some money from the five year plans, Nehru actually pushed it back. Yeah. Yeah. He said that, no, we don't need anything for this. Right. We have to, he has other, other agenda, right? That right. we have to become a non line movement. We have to show the peace. I want to be the most peaceful country on the world. Right. For which the 1962 we lost hundreds and thousands of acres of land, right? Right. So, and that is why at that time TIFR and Tatas were the ones who were funding it. That is why you know that iconic photograph where you see them carrying the rocket on the cycle. Uh, bicycle. Yeah, that is cycle, why it bicycle. happened because they they didn't have money. Government yeah. didn't give any money. It was all yeah. private money. So, yeah. uh, so when also, today Congress I, I starts read, saying that oh, yeah, like I, we did this, we did that. No, government didn't. Uh, help uh, this entire space program until very late. When Indira Gandhi came and she see that what what's going on on the world after the after uh, the assassination of uh, uh, Lahal Bahadur Shastri ji, our second yes. prime minister and Homi Jangi Baba, then she said, okay, let's that. I think that that turned the table of uh, the, the, the Indian government way of thinking and saying, okay. Now we also have to do at that time also we also created raw and, and a lot of things happen in the right. Indian, uh, Indian uh, uh, political uh, scenarios and arenas and all those things happen. But uh, yeah, but uh, uh, here um, ISRO doesn't, ha ISRO also has six, uh, has a, a lot of other uh, institutes which work with uh, uh, yeah. uh, in uh, with ISRO to make this successful, right? For example, the Antrix Corporation in Bangalore which is also the commercial arm of ISRO, they work, right? The Space Application Center in Ahmedabad, they also work with ISRO and they are responsible for the development of the payload and sensor. Similarly, URAO Satellite Center, which is also in Bengaluru, they, were, they help ISRO in designing, development, assemblance, and the testing of the satellite. And finally, the satellites are... Uh, uh, the development of the launch vehicles happens in the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, right? In Thiri Vantanapuram, right? And yeah. then final, finally the satellites are launched from, from the, uh, 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 our, our, uh, what is the name? Shiri Harikota. No, right. it has been named uh, the Satish island. Dhawan. Has... Satish Dhawan Space. Satish Dhawan, right, exactly. I was right. forgetting that. So, uh, so the, it was it was finally launched by that. So that's how the uh, all the all the what I will say uh, all the uh, uh, arms of uh, uh, ISRO work together to make this a uh, successful mission. And now we can very well imagine how many hundreds and thousands of brains, arms, minds, uh, technology, um, uh, patients. And what not, you know, they are involved right. in making one mission successful and to put our name, the Indian name on the moon. So, right. so it's, it's really fascinating, you know. Right. And People think... don't understand that how, how much, how much efforts and patience and everything that, okay, it was done and, and blah, blah, blah. But it's not like that. India has also launched many missions. Some were successful, some were unsuccessful. There are many uh -huh. aspects to this whole thing. It's not just sending a rocket. There is remote yeah. sensing, exactly like you said. Remote sensing. There is engineering. There is metallurgy. There is There's mathematics, physics, astronomy. There are a lot of things. Uh, chemistry, lot of things right? Come together, and yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, like a lot of work that has gone on. As you were saying, it's like C. V. Raman and all those people. What yeah. those guys had given to us, they all become the foundation stones. Yeah. Of this kind of a mission. It's yeah. not very they, easy. They are our founding fathers of the space research, right. I will say, right? Correct. They are our founding fathers which laid the foundation in one way or the other. 
Right. The whole payload was four point tons. Right. So the whole correct, and the whole payload was four point two tons. It was not a, just a small thing that was sent there. Four point two tons. It was not a tons. few pounds that we can <laughs> right. lift and put in our car, right? Right, four point two tons means it is like a F one fifty pickup truck. Yep, it's yep. really big. Uh, so, yeah. so what what was sent there and the technology that that was used, the slingshotting technology, that was just one aspect of the whole thing. People just keep talking about that, uh, you know. So it was low cost and all that, but like what people forget is there was a lot of science. internally which you know like whether it was uh, taking photographs and camera camera was indigenous uh, uh, the liquid oxygen uh, and a uh, liquid hydrogen combination that was used for the yeah. and uh, isro has isro has has uh, walked a long journey to achieve this like if you seen on april 19 1975 they built the first satellite aryabhat Right? right, which was launched by the Soviet Union at that time on April nineteen 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 seventy five. Then on July eighteen nineteen eighty, Rohini was the first satellite to be placed in orbit by Indian made launch vehicle called SLV three. And then after that, in nineteen ninety two, we uh, they they uh, did uh, ASLV, which is augmented satellite uh, launch vehicle, right? And it was launched in. On May twentieth, nineteen ninety-two. Then moving forward, twenty uh, years or eighteen years further, on two thousand eight, India sent the first Chandrayaan one into the orbit, and this was orbiting around the moon at a height of hundred kilometer from the lunar surface for chemical, photogeologic, uh, mineralogy uh, mapping of the moon, mm. and this carried eleven scientific instrument. i want to highlight here a laman scientific instrument built in india united kingdom germany sweden united states of america where we are sitting now and talking and bulgaria mm. so all these uh, after the success of all this uh, after the completion successful completion i will say of all this objective then they raised it to 200 kilometers After six months or seven months in May two thousand eight, so satellite mm. made a more than thirty four hundred orbit around the moon, and finally it was lost in two thousand nine. So uh, on August two thousand nine, so from October two thousand eight to August two thousand nine, almost a period of ten ten months, the Chandrayaan one was very successful and and it was uh, it was uh, a, a accomplished mission and it also gave a boost. And then, if you see in 2012 September, ISRO launched a hundred space mission using PSLV C21 rocket, wow. and this also placed two foreign satellites into the orbit. Right. And then it goes on and on till India launched hundred and uh, make a history of launching hundred and four right satellites, right. which includes only three Indian satellites and the rest were all mm-hmm. of the, of the world. You know. Right. All other countries, including Middle East, like UAE, um, Greece, and and many other countries, they they launched it. You know, right? Yeah, but yeah, the I main think, uh, I would say yeah. of the G G Sat twenty nine satellite, hmm. which was launched in two thousand eighteen, which was the heaviest satellite, weighing around thirty five hundred kilograms, which provide oh. better communication for the remote area. That was very important because they want the remote areas. Uh, the the inner uh, what we can the uh, not the rural I will say but the inner inner most where they don't have any satellites where they don't get the communication that was the main mission uh, they launched it and and it was very successful uh, after that after that success Chandrayaan two was launched on July twenty second two thousand nineteen right mm-hmm. yeah and India make the history being the fourth country. to uh, have a uh, to soft land rover on the surface of moon after russia america and our neighbor china so this is something i uh, like i find uh, like i would like to challenge no uh, uh, so this is something i would like to challenge and what i'm saying <laughs> is there are actually only three countries now which have actually uh, landed a, a thing on the moon 
One is Soviet India. Union. Uh, <laughs> no Soviet Union exists. is no longer a country. <laughs> yes. And Russia. And I also raised the same question. And Russia that, okay. failed. And Russia yeah. failed. So Russia failed. Do that twenty-five years. So U.S., China, and India. That's it. Uh, yeah. Russia has failed. Soviet Union succeeded, but Soviet Union is no longer there. You don't know. I no. I I I 100% agree. I was talking with one of my friend here. Uh, uh, today only we had the breakfast together. So uh, he said, "Oh, I was so excited. India did that, and uh, you become the fourth country." I said, "How come we are the third country?" He said, "No." So he he said, "I said, see, that was Soviet Union. Oh no, no, we call it Russia at that time also because it was mainly the Russians who do that. The other countries were just a right. support system for them." I said, okay, it means you know, I can agree to disagree. Oh, <laughs> you feel no, you. I'm ju- I'm just saying, yeah, you may call it Russia, but Russia just failed. Yeah. So, yeah. so if they were so Which successful was, back I, I then, also, they could have been successful now. Yeah, I was also. Uh, I will be very honest with you, uh, Kapuji, that I was also very disheartened when Luna Twenty Five failed. You know, right. I remember when we failed. I, I will not say failed, but we didn't accomplish hundred percent. Uh, it was on my mind for the next couple of days in 2019, you know. Right. Yeah. So, um, uh, see, we somebody win or somebody loses. It's it's not a man. If somebody loses, it's not like we always say, Sanatan Dharma, that we don't have to celebrate it, right? Yeah, right, if somebody right. Loses. But, but still, you are 100% right. So, with Union did it, but not Russia, you know. Right. Yeah. And I think, but also, uh, like, we, I mean, uh, we owe a lot of debt to uh, Russia and Soviet Union. We cannot forget that the cryogenic engine, which is the basis of this uh, whole mission, was actually, uh, you know, shared, that technology was shared by Russia uh, or Soviet Union at that time uh, with India. And it was uh, the CIA which uh, tried to play dirty and uh, they had, uh, you know, put, uh, like, gotten uh, uh, Dr. Nami Narayan arrested and... Uh, yeah, in, know, 1920, people, yeah. Oh, sorry, in, uh, in, in uh, 1990s and sure, early yeah. 2000, you know? Correct. Yeah. And so all that, like, was, like, is still there. I mean, that is the legacy. And, you know, a lot, since the inception itself, I mean, even when uh, the IAS was, uh, like, going to be started by uh, Jamshedji Tata, even at that time... Lord Curzon was saying, like, why do these, uh, like, it, it was, like, what he was saying was, like, it is as if uh, giving a top hat to a naked man who doesn't even have a trouser. Yeah, you know, leave that time. What you know, happened in 2004, the New York Times? Yeah, yeah it has not changed. Even today. Yeah, that mentality has not changed. I also put a post on my Facebook saying that, okay, New York Times has said, knock, knock, knock with a bull with his hand right. and the elite creep is under there. And now somebody sent me uh, a, a very nice cartoon saying that uh, the elite club is inside with a bull and <laughs> these people are knocking at the door like right. a rocket which has American flag, one has a Chinese flag, one has a Russian flag and one has a UK flag. Knock, knock, knock. Can you help us? <laughs> it was hilarious and it was... Means, these people have, you know, what we call supremacists or something. They have their problem and issue. But you are living in America. I'm living in America. Normal man is okay. But right. these these organizations, I don't know who controls them or who manipulate them. But they they don't. They just show that they are at the top, which is which is nonsense. Even right. I will I will now this has come. Let me tell you what they have written on Chandrayaan. Give me one second, okay? Mm -hmm. They said uh, uh, Give me one second. I, I also wrote over there Yeah. They said that Although an Indian astronaut flew in orbit in 1984, the country has never sent human to space on its own. Right. Did you see? The country has never sent the humans of its own. What does this mean? (laughs) Means, okay, 
Yes, right. we haven't sent anybody over there, but we are in the progress of that. Right. You know, which I don't digest the way they keep on humiliating the people. Now, another article they is wrote, where, listen it very carefully. In a country with a deep tradition of science, the excitement and anticipation around the landing provided a rare movement of unity in what has otherwise been. Now, hear it loudly. Fraught times of secretarian tension stoked by the divisive policies of Mr. Modi ruling Hindu Nationalist Party. Yeah, that's what they do because they have to bring all those things at every point and it is a fake propaganda because... Yeah. Uh, like I Mr. don't Modi, understand their Mr. mentality. Modi, I think like they need to remember that Mr. Modi has won two elections which in themselves were the largest ever election, democratic election in human history. And in both the election, in fact, uh, subsequently in the second one, he won the one of the largest mandates ever in Indian history. To, to point fingers at uh, uh, that kind of a leader, that kind of democratic leader, and saying and things the way who they say is the not number of yeah, who has won the highest number of international awards? Now he went to Greece. Greece is the first leader in the history of Greece to give the highest honor of award. He has got it from the Muslim countries, Palestine, from UAE, from I think Saudi also. Many countries have given. France has given. Many countries have given the highest award and he is still having 82% rating and still these people it really make me laugh at them it doesn't burn my blood anymore because you Great. remember when when we he, they have put the article uh, just before 19 2019 election results modi divider in chief you remember that article yeah, I know. I, and, and that is the I whole I read the thing. whole article. Right. And I, and I bashed them. I sent an email. I said, stop, stop, stop. Okay, you are, you don't know anything. If you want to, if you nearly need to learn, go there and settle there for a couple of months or years and see how it is working. And here also, a rare movement of unity, a rare movement of unity. You just go and see how, how people are united. No, they, our, our they, scientists, our scientists, it, it doesn't matter. There is a guy from who, he's a Muslim guy. He is from Lucknow. He was appointed and he was involved in the successful landing of, uh, of uh, 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 this thing. There were Christians working over there. There were Muslims working over there. When we have 1.4 billion people, small things happen. It happens everywhere. Here also it happens. Which is one yeah, this the entire country of is completely divided right now. Look at what how it treats its, its ex uh, president yes. and how oh, it actually know. treats uh, like uh, like his followers. And uh, like if the same thing was happening in any other country, they would actually yeah. term that. I will not say any other country. I will say especially in the Asian country. Yeah, France, France. How many uh, things happened during July Fourth? I remember, right? The whole France was burned down. Just one news, and after that it vanished. And and the roids they were going for days, days yeah. or weeks, I will say, Leave right. days, right? They didn't celebrate at uh, December twenty fifth, the Christmas. The roids were there. No answer. Pin drop silence, as though somebody has switched their uh, lips over there. I don't understand that. That I, I that's ridiculous, uh, you know. I think it's a continuation of the uh, white man's burden that was there during the colonial times because they think they it's their burden to teach us uh, you know like other countries brown and black uh, how they should be living when actually like like you know talking about undemocratic and all those things when the truckers uh, strike happened the protest happened in canada yeah there, i have given an article account. on that yeah there the truckers accounts were emergency broken. Emergency, emergency was declared. Was, uh, and was and in India, when the farmer protest happened, CA happened, CA was happened for six months. Nobody asked anything. 
farmer protest happened for more than a year nobody say anything they were getting food they were having toilets they were getting their clothes washed they were having the tanks and everything they were living there but right. see what what the dictator Trudeau did over here he's it's a dictatorship dictator yeah, in the lieu of democracy like even here in the us right now i think we are in a state of a dictatorship because yeah. uh, uh, they are it's a fake. Uh, 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 i mean the current establishment is targeting uh, its uh, like uh, you know strongest uh, you know, opponent yes yeah well, so, they, they say so that, that russia has done that putin has so done different. that yeah it's no different from what say happens in uh, saudi arabia saudi land or china or somalia yeah i mean nigeria is still better like i, yeah. I was thinking in nigeria but nigeria i think like probably those, those countries are still better uh, these guys are even worse uh, like yeah. they are like pakistan right now like right, that is exactly. what is happening yeah it's a banana is it's going to be like a banana republic you know yeah. now let's come back to our uh, our chandrayaan uh, yeah so let's bring chandrayaan 3 right, right? Right. So uh, Chandrayaan three, yes, Israel has also missed a lot of things. Like in on August ten, nineteen seventy nine, the uh, SLV three, uh, which carried Rohani technology payload, it was partially successful. Similarly, Insat one A, you must have heard. I used to hear Insat one A has been launched for seven years, but it was abandoned after a couple of months because it it was not working properly. Similarly, in eighty seven, uh, Israel also failed. Uh, uh uh when its satellite which was just 150 kg uh mm. named as uh, SROSS1 it was not able to be launched and it and, and it failed over there so isro also has has taken uh, uh you know uh, uh the plus and the minus you know it it, it has grown through uh, uh, to a very uh, trajectory where they have success and where they have failures too you know right. what i mean right so so it's not that that every time we uh, the isro or the scientists are always successful the latest one the unsuccessful was in august of uh, 31st 2017 when uh, the polar satellite launch vehicle the 41st set, uh, flight was supposed to launch ir and ss1h which is the indian regional navigation center system uh, which we call navic but, but it, it didn't work well you know this right. resulted in satellite separation occurring within the heat shield resulting in a very unsuccessful mission and it happens you never know because once you left the earth atmosphere you never know what's going to happen there right, right. it's just our analysis that okay the gravity will be this much okay the repulsion will be this much okay attraction will be this much but we don't know the original facts and figure right Right. Sometimes we are giving a trajectory like this, and all of a sudden, because they, it doesn't have that attraction pull, it goes right way. It goes left way. It it doesn't follow that trajectory which you want to follow it. Right. So these That's are right. all the scientific, um, what I say, anomalies or what I can say, you know, which happens. Yeah, they were learning. I mean, learning opportunities for everyone. there exactly. and that's how they have taken it right uh, because they have always come back stronger than they were earlier on and yeah. like even with chandrayaan 2 when it failed and uh, you know modi ji actually went and consoled the yeah. then uh, you know the chief person yeah, yeah chairman and yeah. to now and uh, how they have succeeded and come back so it, exactly. it, 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 like it's been a very challenging challenging journey throughout you know how the colonial british were trying to put them down then how the cia kind of targeted them how the internal people like like internal opposition parties and in even internal uh, you know initial like government itself was not in their favor the uh, was not trying to help them uh, so uh, so it was very like uh, you know they they have been working against all odds and despite all the failures and all the odds they have come out with something which is truly remarkable truly remarkable exactly 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 and if you see uh, uh, i want to discuss that at a later time but since you have right. said that uh, uh, do you remember that uh, the guy from um, the news reader from uh, bbc who said that india has to give back our 2.3 billion uh, pounds 
which we have given them in the in in uh, charities but i was saying okay let's sit down across the table buddy and let's see what you have to give us and what we have to give you back you have plundered 45 trillion dollars from india kohino peacock throne they were saying one of my friend i was discuss, uh, talking with him about uh, because uh, he uh, he he was also from uh, you know the country which uh, uh, they have plundered i don't want to rename uh, they said that uh, one of my uh, 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 one of my sister daughter asked me that you say that uh, they have plundered everything and how we have the pyramids here Be and his uh, his sister told him honey because they were too heavy for them to carry. <laughs> That's right. why they, they can't carry the pyramids. The pyramids are still here. Right. So this, uh, now, you know, you, uh, you, know, you like got the point. Uh, you know, recently, I think just last week, there was this, the uh, yes. chief curator of the British Museum in London was arrested because he had stolen 1,500 pieces of ancient, uh, you know, that the British had stolen from other countries. And he had stolen from the British Museum and sold it on eBay and made millions of dollars from it. And I think uh, he apparently said, well, like it was stolen material anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. so it was... Yeah, right? his name was uh, Patrick uh, Christian. Let me, from the business today, let me uh, get some ex uh, experts from there. He said, uh, for the GB News, I would like to congratulate India for landing on the dark side of the moon. Thank you. I would also like to now invite India to return 2.3 billions of foreign aid money that we sent them between 2016 and 2021. Absolutely wrong. Wrong information. He should go and understand that India is not taking a single penny since 2005 after Pranab Mukherjee, who was who was later become the president. So I will say President Pranab Mukherjee. See, at that time he was a he was the finance minister of India, finance secretary. He said, we don't need any of your aid. Stop it. This is not and aid. This is actually investment on which they get returns. Oh. And it helps the British government rather than the Indians. Because this that's is why the British an investment. Are after, yeah, that's yeah, why the British not government an aid, is after it is investment. India. Right. Okay. That's why, I, why the British governments want India to sign of a free trade agreement so that right. they can save its economy. <laughs> so if they want to take that $2.5 billion, they can be India's guest because nobody gives a damn <laughs> because they, yeah. they are earning from it. Like India doesn't right. earn a penny out of it, actually. Right. Uh, I uh, I think we have spoken in one of your podcasts right. in which I told you, I was laughing that they said, say, you saved us 200 years back, please save us now. <laughs> and I was <laughs> laughing because they want... Do you remember um, uh, Theresa May in 2017 or 18? She right. came to India. Why? Because Tata Group has said we are closing our our uh, plant there, and it will it will give 40,000 jobless people. So she flew all the way from London to New Delhi, do all the puja, wear a very nice sari, going there, and so we 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 recognize you. We do this. Because he want Britain Tata G not to shut down the plant over there. What is that? Uh, Land Rover, right? Right. Uh, there. So that 40,000 jobs are not lost. And it will have a ripple effect on the uh, British economy, which was already in, you know, roller coaster. I mean, I see, the thing is, the fact is that uh, most of the, I mean, you know, I think we have discussed this earlier also, you know, Brooks Adams, who was the, uh, you know, great grandson of uh, John Adams and grandson of John Quincy Adams. He had written a book in 1895. And that book was called The Law of Civilization and Decay. And there he had said how the Industrial Revolution in Britain started because of the plunder in from the battle of plassey yep. the plunder yep. that happened at that time that robert clive actually took 800 uh, thousand pounds of gold uh, back to uh, britain from plassey that was the reason why actually the industrial revolution started in britain 
because everything no. happened after the 1760 1757 the battle of plassey happened 1760 this steam engine and the rest of the things started coming out because like the, like he said very nicely he said you know innovation was like right. the, uh, uh, the power outlet but without the power of money and credit it it was nothing and that's nothing. exactly what without happened without money you can't do anything even you right. even you have the biggest technology with you but it needs the money it needs man material and money right so like you said they stole 45 trillion dollars just from india they stole other like money from africa and other countries of asia as well they must have yeah. st- stolen around a one uh, you know like uh, like say 100 trillion dollars from across the world after that today's gdp of <laughs> they call this 2 trillion dollars 3 trillion dollars what that shows is that the britain itself as a nation has been the biggest loser biggest the, financial the loser in the history of mankind no yeah, country has stolen 100 trillion dollars and then fallen back to uh, you know less than 3 trillion dollars that shows no. how great they are how great britain is yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. How great to pretend is right. So that's what I was saying, na. Because people see, if you are hardworking, you can build the castles. But if you snatch the castle, you can't know. You don't know how to maintain it. And one right. day, it will ruin up. That's what he said. The first generation earns. The second generation spends, and the third generation blows. Right. so right. these people have just plundered all the wealth they don't know anything and then why the world wars happen because of this money right because they have plundered the money they have not earned from them right? right so they don't have to worry where the money is coming they just keep on uh, throwing the money away the world wars happen first world war second world war and all those because of their interest also but this is another day uh, story we can discuss right. but the, I hope uh, uh, yeah. the viewers also get the so point. I think right? we have discussed quite a lot today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so let let discuss about the difference between Chandrayaan two and three, right? Okay. What yeah. exactly is Chandrayaan two? Two. So it had uh, uh, in two, it was an orbiter, a lander called Vikram, which was named up after Vikram Sarabhai ji, and a rover called Pragya, right? But in Chandrayaan uh, Chandrayaan three, it is designed with a focus on failed. base strategy to enhance the mission success that was the main mission statement of that we need to focus on failed base strategies to enhance the mission success okay and right. in chandrayaan 2 the mission design was a, followed a success based approach so here they followed a fail based uh, strategies right so chandrayaan you they were aiming for a precise landing within a target of 500 meters to 500 meters area but here it was absolutely different they said we have to land safety land between 4 km multiply by 2.4 km so now you can say eight time they has increased 500 meter to 4 km 500 meter to 2.4 so eight multiply by 5 okay so almost they have changed the way it has and also the vikram lander has been equipped with more fuel for longer travel distance to reach the landing site or an alternate site if required you know right, if they right. think okay they can't uh, be get down here it can land here let's do it somewhere else and the lander as the mission says the lander has the uh, name was vikram name is vikram sorry and the rover name was pragyan which omitting the orbiter from the configuration you know so it was always omitting the orbiter from the configuration and uh, changes in the uh, so changes in the lander physical structure also involves removing the central th- uh, thruster and strengthening the legs for high velocity landing so that when it land the legs are so powerful it will not you know uh, fall the lander will not fall so the legs were given high velocity and also adding more solar panel so that the power generation can be generated more and more power generation fascinating yeah and similarly if you see the payloads also the payloads uh, includes ramba the lander payload was ramba and um chas stt ilsa and lb which was similar to 
Chandrayaan 2, which measures their semi, uh, uh, their thermal properties, their semi-city and all those. But the rover payload, earlier it was alpha, uh, alpha particle axis spectrometer they have used and laser-based induced breakdown spectroscope, but here they have used the same, uh, but mainly focusing on in situ elemental composition analysis. Hmm. So earlier they were saying, okay, we can make elemental analysis. Now they say, no, we have, they will mainly focus for in situ elemental analysis. And the propulsion mode for the Chandrayaan 3 carries this uh, shape payload, which were designed for habitable planets through spectral pol uh, polar uh, uh, polarimetry. Okay. Wow. So this this was the main main things when it happened, and similarly when Chandrayaan, uh, the aim was clear to have a successful soft landing with Vikram and deploy Pragyan rover to explore the lunar, uh, lunar right. surface, and the changes in the design and improvement in that landing site determination increases the chances for a very successful landing. Right. If you may have heard that on 22nd. A statement came which really blew me out that oh maybe we may change the date to 27. I said what is going on? Is it everything okay? Is it everything okay? But everything was okay and and it was absolutely at that, that time it, it touched down the uh, moon and say hello buddy I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you know so that that's, right. that's the technicality uh, you know these people did and. And I can tell you my story. Uh, I wake up. I was just in front of uh, 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 of uh, ISRO website on the YouTube. Uh, the, it was live telecasting, and you will not believe, Kapuji. I was like, "Okay, what's going on? Oh my God!" I went five times to the uh, uh, bathroom. I don't pee, but I was thinking I have to pee. And when everything was successful, I was I was always praying like uh, when when the mission was going on the last fifty minutes. Hey Lord Shiva, please make it successful. Hey Lord Krishna, please make it successful. <laughs> I, mean, I was so tense after it was successful. I was thinking I have never been so tense in examination. I did my bachelor's in pharmacy. I did my master's in computer sciences. I have been given many interviews over there in in our daily projects in uh, all my career. Never so much uh, tense, you know. Production releases happen. Everything happened. But this time, oh my God! So that that shows that how excited a normal uh, person like Indian. You can take India, Indian from India, but you can't can't take the India from Indian. Right? So, <laughs> so I was so so tense. Yeah. So, so I think excited. it was very befitting that the place where it landed, that point was called Shiv Shakti. Shiv Shakti. Everybody, <laughs> everybody was praying to Lord Shiva at that time. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. So, uh, because it was very good because, see, Shiva is called the whole universe creator, right? Means right. He, he can handle that. That's why, and, and without a Shakti, Shiva is nothing. It always says, right? Correct. Right. So that's why it's called Shiv Shakti. Right. And you must have heard from Pakistan. No, it should not be called Shiv Shakti. Are they going to make a temple over there? And I was laughing with the audios going over there, the video, the clips. That use your brain, right. man. See, the thing is that uh, you know they uh, they come from a certain uh, type of ideology and mindset. They don't understand that you know this entire oh. concept of Shiv Shakti is more existential in nature. It right. has to do with the universal consciousness, which is Shiva, and Shakti is the uh, the energy that actually uh, you know starts the uh, the creative manifestation of this existence. So that is why this whole idea is so important. But uh, but it's very tough to explain to these people because uh, they don't have that idea you know idea or concept no, of those the things. problem is that you can take a horse to the ocean but you can't force him to drink water right, right. so that's the problem you can explain them unless excuse me unless they are able to hear and understand that if right. you have put a if you have put a uh, 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 if you have closed your eyes and, and put a hanky around it and say no no i don't want to hear i don't want to see even if you're seeing them, they don't want to see that. That's the problem, right. and right. that that's what uh, that's what uh, many of the uh, bloggers and all those you know because they earn from Indian uh, videos only. Right. <laughs> that's their bread and butter. 
they were also saying the same that we have to understand because see 100 years back or 50 years back or 200 years back they were the same genes if you that's what that was right. uh, uh, the indian prime minister vajpayee uh, uh, once said just take the dna and see which where right. you belong to right you know right okay on i think we have discussed almost all aspects today and it's been right uh, like quite a quite an informative uh, did you see the, and... uh, the pictures uh, they are sending so i, I right. saw that pictures on yeah, the isro beautiful. website it it yeah. is beautiful you know the brown yeah. color grayish color you know <laughs> so uh, so we'll come back with another topic uh, very very soon i think this was the like very like good change from the geopolitics that we always discuss so right. uh, right. so thank and you we, again we wish yeah. Yeah, we wish uh, that now they are sending uh, adityan right? right we wish isro a very good luck and we, our prayers are with them 110% 1000% right. and it will be double success what chandrayaan 3 has Absolutely. so now yeah whether it's uh, yeah. adityan one or, or any uh, any uh, program yeah. they have uh, right. for the launch they it would be a huge success you know right Okay, so uh, thank you, Ankushi, uh, for coming thank again you. and yeah. uh, you know talking to us. Uh, so talk to you later, and uh, please uh, do read Ankushi's book, uh, Geopolitics uh, Redefined. Uh, he's a co-author of that book, and you can also go to our uh, you know website, uh, drishtikon dot com, and subscribe to the free newsletter that comes out every Sunday. Uh, so thank you again, and uh, see you in the next episode. Okay, thank you. Bye.